How do? How are you? Now then? Now then, now then. Tony Wilson, 30 questions. Um, we're going to do the questions. I feel once he's answered them, you will know him. Links in the description and pinned comment to previous chats I've had with Tony. Would you like to give your sister and brother a shout out? You do your brother. All right, Peter, you're the best brother in the world. And Michelle, you're the best sister in the world and all my other sisters, but especially Peter. Right. Nice one, kiddo. 30 questions. There's a few easy ones. I think these are going to be hard for Tony. Um, just going to get straight into it. We'll start with a nice easy one. Okay. No looking. I'm not looking. Sweet. I can't see from there anyway. I've not got <laughs> my glasses on. Sweet or savoury? Savoury. Are you ready? This is this is the first thing yeah. my mate wanted me to ask you this. Okay. Why did you buy an axe? Uh, when I went to go up against the family that was telling me I couldn't go in a pub. Well, I thought it slits in the belt pretty good and it's a fearsome looking thing and I didn't want to use it, but I wanted them to see it so that the fear of God would be on them so I didn't have to use it. On, on on your own, you were going up against... 15 of them. And I said, this day will go down in history because I will lack every fucking one of you up, and I would have. I was in that mood. Because I was having them telling me which pub and which, where I could and couldn't go. I said, are you having a laugh? So the day I got out of prison with my discharge grant, I went to the local corner hardware shop and bought a little axe. Went into the pub that night and sure enough, they all come in, all of them. And I can name them, even now to this day, I can name one after the other, brothers, four yeah. of them. They're mates. But a lot of them knew me as well. And then that's when I decided, right, I'm going to go up the toilet. If that toilet door goes, the shit's going to hit the fan. Anyway, literally. literally. Anyway, the elder brother came through the door and said to me, have you still got a grudge against my family? And I said... I haven't got a grudge against anybody, but I'm fucked if I'm being told by a load of fucking tossers what pub I can't fucking go in. No, no, it's not like that, it's not like that. I said, right, fair enough, and they bought me a pint and that was it, end up. Right, one of my good friends uh, grew up with Tony. Um, <clears throat> when I first met Tony, she told me about him, she said he had a tough childhood, Sam, and he was a tough lad and he used to scare me. Uh, grew up in Farnworth. Right. Did you have a good childhood? Just in brief. Not really, no. It was very violent. Violent? Against me and my brother. Father was a bastard. And uh, I remember that you said that quite a lot of the time you went hungry. Yeah, yeah, I, I did. I did, and I used to... What bit of money that I could steal or scrimp and scrounge or whatever, I'd go to a local cafe and get pie and peas and gravy and chips. Pie, pea and gravy. How old were you then? Nine or ten. Nine or ten years old. Yeah. Bearing that in mind, guys. I still love pie, peas and gravy. <laughs> yes, so do I. <laughs> Explain about your parents' debt on their house. Oh, yeah, um... They, in the in the seventies or late seventies, there was a a, a a thing where the government were giving grants out to people who own their own house that they pay a certain percentage to have their house done up. You know, uh, what is it? Modernise it. Well, modernisation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Modernisation. So get the bathroom done proper. Get the central heating in. Get the walls insulated. All that stuff. Anyway. I came downstairs one day and my, mother, my stepmother was crying. Uh, and I thought, oh, fucking hell, it's hit the fan again. They're at they're it again. And now we're going to pay this and we've not got the money. We're going to lose the house. And then I sat listening. Uh, Gundalak uh, was the firm uh, who I still shout out. I don't know if they're still about, but thanks, Gundalak. Um, was, the, was the name of the firm. Uh, and my mother and father owed them £1,500. A lot of money in them days. Yeah, in the 70s, yeah. So I rung them up 
And I said, look, I'm 18, 19, I think I was then. I'm strong and fit. I said, my mother and father, there's no way they can pay this debt, but I'll work for you for however long you want till you say the debt's paid. And he agreed. You fucking agreed. I was like gobsmacked. I was like, whoa, fucking hell. So I told my dad, do you know what he said? About time you made yourself useful. Abused as a kid. Paid his mum and dad's debt off. So that got paid off and then three days later I was expecting not to ever pay rent again for a long time. She expected me ten pound out of my door. And when I won't pay I got kicked out and then within eighteen months I were doing three years jail for fighting and stuff in there because I got sent to a town I didn't know anybody. Does prison work? Uh it worked for me because I did the right courses, but it only works if you want it to work. If you're in a mind where you're not scared of prison, then no. Did you ever assault, ever assault prison staff? No, I've never assaulted anyone of, of, of authority, except in the 80s when four coppers decided to physically abuse me and they were ramming the fingers in my mouth and I fought back and bit his thumb. I got three month DC. What's DC? detention centre, quick shot, shot treatment, and that's another story. They, took, they sent me there and I wouldn't cooperate, I wouldn't do the circuits, I wouldn't do nothing. They beat me and I used to say, is that best you can do? I used to get better than that when I was five and it made them even more angry. So I spent 57 days in the block and then they said, oh, we can take you back to court and get another three months. So they had me outside the office and I heard the governor saying, nah, fuck that, get him out of this fucking place. <laughs> and then Peter went about six months later and he went, you're not like your fucking brother, are you? <laughs> Have you ever walked away from a fight? Uh, yeah. Not in the past, but yeah, since leaving prison, yeah. What's your purpose now, Tony? Just to... Um, have a happy life with my family, my sisters, my brother, um, not bother anybody, not cause anyone any problems, and just be a nice guy. As a teenager, did you have a purpose? As a teenager, just to get just to get uh, through to the next day. Really? Yeah. D did you used to think that? Yeah, I used to think if I can live till tomorrow, I'm right. Uh, <laughs> I'm not laughing for no, that reason, no. you know. Right, Tony, if I give you a million pounds now, yeah. what would you do with it? I'd, uh, I'd put it in the bank and live off the interest. Would you? Yeah. Would you the, help the, people out? The, I'd help my family out. I'd, I, I'd, I, I wouldn't spend more than 5% of it. And then it wouldn't run out. Okay. Hardest fight you ever had? Joby Henry. Who's that? Do you want to just... He was a boxer. Yep. from Salford yep. and uh, was in a pub and uh, I uh, his mate caught me and knocked me pint and I called him a dickhead yep. and next thing this bloody big black fist come flying to me face yep. and it's it knocked me back but months and months later I'm at an house where I'm scoring drugs and the dealer will not let me in because Joe Bianni was in there and I said oh did he call me names he said no he spoke fucking highly of you he said to him I knew I were in for a fight when he hit him and he didn't budge <laughs> so, and I actually won that fight but only just and the only reason I won that fight is because I'd just finished a three year sentence and I've been gymming it all through that three year in sentence in prison yeah. so you were a fit lad yeah best advice for kids don't take drugs, ever, under any circumstances. I'm going to underline that. Cracking, short, sharp. How, how do you know uh, when you can trust someone or if you can trust someone? Uh, well, trust is earned. Um, you, 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 you're never 100% unless you've been years. Like, I trust my brother. Yep. 100%. Yep. I trust my sister. Yeah. 100%. I trust my family 100%. But there are people who are in my life who I wouldn't trust as far as I could throw them. You know. Fair dues. What would you change about yourself? What would I change? My health. Health? Yeah. 
I'm suffering at the minute. Okay. <clears throat> Your biggest fear? My biggest fear is getting recalled. Tony's an IPP prisoner, 10 year license. Once his license is spent, we'll be having some serious conversations for yeah. these guys, won't we? Yeah, I mean, I've been on IPP now since 2005. I was one of the first ones to get it. I got uh, IPP for a, a violent attack on, on, on one of my neighbors who'd been terrorizing me and my brother for two years. Not that that takes away the fact that it was horrendous attack what I did. Uh, I got three year, two month tariff. I did eight year, two month due to the courses that I had to do. I did them courses and it's put me in good stead where I've put all them, what I learned into practice. That's why I'm coming up to 10 years now on license without any violent offenses, without any violent, I don't have road rage, any of that. Um, so it's worked uh, and I'm up for parole to have my license squashed in July. Favourite person? My brother. Very short some of these answers. I, I like that. What makes you angry? Nonsense. And anything to do with hurting kids. Are you happy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest regret? Biggest regret was taking drugs. It ruined my life. Have you ever been successful? Well, I was a successful drug addict because I dealt drugs for 25 years and never got caught. So I was successful at selling drugs. I, I didn't want for drugs for ever. For every day I had it for 25 years. I never, I never went a day without drugs. If I'd have converted that money that I spent on drugs, I could have bought a row of terrorist houses. Probably. Well, I worked it out. I think it was about 50 grand a year I was having. Really? Yeah, and that was in the 70s and 80s. Wow. Do you feel like a failure at any point? Have you felt like a failure? Uh, well, I have failed, haven't I? I failed as a father. I'm trying at my best now to step up to the mark as a grandfather and she said that I'm the greatest the other day which put a lump in my throat and you know she said I'm the greatest there you go um, so I have been a failure and I'm trying now to rectify that by doing positive things to make that a difference what makes you feel alive my family this next one's going to be tough or maybe not What's your favourite food? My favourite food, at the moment, porridge. <laughs> Syrup porridge, I love it. Not chocolate, not... Well, yeah, chocolate as well, but if you said food, I'm, that's a sweet, that's like a toffee, that's like a treat. If you'd have said favourite treat, I'd have said Maltesers. <laughs> or, or, or celebrations. I've been, I'm in stage at the minute where I'm eating a box of them a day, or, or every other day. Really? <laughs> <laughs> your, doc, your doctor told you for health, you've got yeah, to lose weight. I've got you, to stop Which now, is going yeah. to be a battle in itself, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's worse than bloody drugs, giving up food. Well, the, the problem has been some of the medication you've been on. That's yeah. a problem for a lot of people. Yeah, it has. It just yeah. increases your appetite. It does. Are you too hard on yourself or not hard enough? Uh, I'm not hard on myself. Uh, I try to do what I know is right. Even though I fucked up a few times, um, yeah, I try. I know what's right and wrong. Yeah. So if I do something, then I take the consequences. Um, but whether I'm hard on myself, uh, it is what it is. I, th I think some t some people are too hard on themselves. Yeah. You know, they need to get a lot of people I meet need to give themselves a bit of a break. Yeah. You know, when when. Shit happens. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. You know, and they try and make amends for things. I think the the important thing is always to get back on track. Yeah, just just put it behind you and start again or on a better footing. That's what I'm trying to do at the minute. Very good advice, that. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever given up on a dream? 
I've never really had a dream. No? Not really. The only dream I've had is to stay out of fucking jail. And it's worked up to now, <laughs> 10 years. That's the longest I've ever gone. Oh, man. Would you make a good friend? Yeah, and a lot of people tell you that. Why is that? Because what, I, what makes that? Uh, because I would never turn on a friend. I would never steal off a friend. I would never betray a friend. Simple. You've got some good sort of moral values, haven't you? <clears throat> I try to. Even though I've been a fucking down and out drug dealer and bad boy, that was different. Well, well the violence t t tends to come with the territory, doesn't it? Well, really? if you've got people coming through your door, then you're going to fight back, which I did on several occasions, and they ended up running off, and the taxi driver, six of them diving in the taxi, the taxi said, taxi driver said, picked up wrong fucking house there as I'm chasing after them with two meat cleaners. You were well known, weren't you, Tony? Yeah, but I'm not like that anymore. I don't want to be known no, like that. No, anymore. no, no. But yeah, no, it's, it's part of your makeup, though, isn't it? it However, was. again, you know, uh, and people told me this. You, you don't have to tell me this. I can tell from how you speak and carry yourself and some of the answers to these questions already that you didn't go out looking for trouble. No, no, I don't. You don't because if you do, you're gonna find someone who'll beat you. If you go looking for trouble, sooner or later you'll come across. Usually, if you don't keep your nose to yourself, when it comes to you, they're fucking wankers. They haven't even got a fight in them. I mean, I've had people cause trouble with me and they didn't last 10 seconds. They didn't even, they didn't even hit me once. And when they did, it was like a fly landing on my chin. You know, and what was that? Were you one of them who, are you quite forgiving? Yeah, so well, once, once, it, once, it, a bit, if we've had beef with someone and we've sorted it, then yep. yeah, I, so I don't hold grudges. If you have a fight, yeah, you know, but then, I have had done. a, I did hold a grudge for nine years. Someone attacked my brother yeah. with a with a machete, yeah. And nine years later, I met him on high wing in strange ways, and I kicked ten bells out of him. Yep. But but that that the, the reason behind that, you know, well, there was a reason. He attacked my brother, and I weren't forgiving him for that. Fair dues. Would you trust anyone with your life? My brother. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> another, this is another difficult question. Or maybe not. Dark or milk chocolate? Milk. One thing you would like to achieve before you die? Uh, total abstinence. Of anything, substance of you... Uh, craving he be it food drugs alcohol even sex really well yeah because i went through a stage where i was let's say i had a friend with benefits and she was costing me a fucking fortune right tony they're, they're my 30 questions for you yeah, okay uh some good solid answers no thought about a lot of them a lot of people you know well, I, it, it seems pretty right, straightforward to answer. Yeah, but it, it was straightforward for you. You know, oh, you're okay. very sort of, you know, you, you have your own ideas and sort of standards and things, which which made it easy. Um, is there anything you'd like to add? Um, there were interesting questions. Uh, the funniest one was the bloody dark milk or, or light chocolate because the other day I bought two fucking boxes of Maltesers that was dark chocolate. I ended up giving them to Peter because he likes dark chocolate. I was devastated. <laughs> you thought I'd lost a tenner. I was absolutely devoured. I got home and they were fucking dark chocolate and I can't stand dark chocolate. So I said, here, Pete, do you like dark chocolate? He said, yeah. I said, no, I've got two packs of Maltesers. Oh, great. He was loving it crazy world listen uh tony thank you very much mate okay. thanks for your honest answers yeah like i say when this this guy's license is finished yeah we'll come back license, and uh, we can have, have some serious conversations they will be very educational yeah. and uh if there is anyone out there on ipp or any members of a family who are on ipp just remember this if you've got any loved ones who've been recalled when they get out, they do not have to start their 10 years again. Their 10 years starts from the first time they get released. 
So if they got released six years ago and they've been recalled last year and they get out next year, they don't have to do the 10 years. They'll do the six years that they were already out plus the two years in jail. Then they'll only have to do two years and they can go in front of the parole board to have the case locked up. When all these lads and lasses do get out that are stuck in a system, I'm thinking they need to sort a licence because a lot of them are going to need a lot of help. Yeah. They're going to be mentally screwed up and the like. And a 10-year licence after it's serving... Hard. It's hard. I've it been on licence 10 years and you're literally walking on eggshells. But it is possible. It is doable. You just have to be very careful where you go, what you do, what you say. You have to be very careful. And that's the only advice I can give. It is doable. It is doable. Tony Wilson. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll see thee. I'll see thee.